So today we're going to be looking at the Self Wealth shared trading platform, more specifically the desktop version. Now they've also released a new app recently, which we'll have a look at in a separate video. Previously, we also had a look at Perla, which is a new broker that is fully focused on long-term investing. So check that video out as well somewhere here. There should be a link in description as well. If you guys are new here, my name is Fazy. This channel is about finance and investing. Before we begin, as usual, this video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Please do some research of your own as well. Let's jump into it. So first of all, let's have a look at the pricing structure of Self Wealth. And as you can see, they really pride themselves on being a flat fee broker. And as you can see with the little note at the bottom, they're saying that they're pretty much Australia's first flat fee share trading platform. So that's a pretty big deal for Australia. Pretty much all brokers before that were having a tiered pricing structure. So as long as your trade value started to increase, you would get charged more and more. So Self Wealth really came out and gave people that flat fee structure, which is pretty good. So credit where credit is due. And of course, they are also fully chess sponsored. And as you can see, based on this comparison, they're pretty much cheaper than all the big four banks. And it seems that Self Wealth is really trying to compete with the big four banks only. And they've conveniently left out all the other new players in the market that we've seen like Stake, which is also entering in the ASX market, charging a flat $3 fee starting from next year. You've also got Superhero where they're, where they're charging $5 per trade. And then you've also got Perla, which is charging a flat fee of $9.50 as well, and also some free ETFs as well. So they've conveniently left out those types of brokers, um, as you can see. But you know, credit where credit is due, Self Wealth has done pretty good when it comes to giving people that flat fee solution. It was pretty new for the time. But now as things are getting more and more cheaper, I think Self Wealth needs to start being more and more competitive. Let me know what you guys think though. Now, if you guys want to know more about stake entering into the ASX market, check out this video right here. This video will basically explain what's happening with stake and their flat fee structure as well. So check it out. Link in description as well. And looking at the pricing for the US shares for Self Wealth, as we can see, once again, they're comparing themselves to the big four banks with the Comsex and the NAB trades and the Westpacs and the ANZs of Australia. And look, we get it, you're pretty competitive when it comes to comparing with the big four banks. But when it comes to comparing with some other new players in the market, self wealth is not really competitive. And to be honest, charging brokerage for US trades doesn't really make sense from a customer perspective. Actually, you know, when it comes to paying for those types of fees, because as a customer, when you've got options with companies like Stake, or Superhero, and even Perla is offering US trades, which is cheaper than self wealth, it doesn't make sense to pay brokerage when it comes to that sort of stuff, right? Obviously, you're going to pay an FX fee no matter what. So you may as well choose a broker that has a reasonable FX fee and that they don't charge brokerage. So yeah, paying $9.50 per trade and that $9.50 is in US dollars as well. That just does not make any sense to me. Um, and that is just pretty expensive in my opinion. And when you scroll down, you can see that they're claiming to be Australia's best US share trading app. Um, <laughs> that's a bit debatable. I'm not too sure by what metrics they are the best US share trading app, but you know, when it comes to pricing, I wouldn't really say that they're the best. Um, so yeah, not on the pricing front, but you know, the other stuff is more subjective to the actual user, I guess. So for me right now, I do prefer to use Self Wealth and Perla for Australian shares and ETFs. I don't use them for American stuff because it is a bit expensive. So I prefer to use stake instead, instead when it comes to American stuff, but if you do want to check out Self Wealth, there should be a link in the description for five free trades as well. Go check it out and we'll both get those five trades. Now Self Wealth also offers a subscription which is completely optional. It is $20 per month and as you can see, it basically gives you those extra detailed stock reports, stock screeners. Also, you can look at Self Wealth members, target portfolios and news articles. So depending on who you are, you might find that valuable. Personally, for me, I don't like to trade day trade that often anyway. So that stuff is not too valuable for me, but for the right person, it may be worth it. Plus, it also may be tax deductible as well, as you guys can see right there. Logging into the platform, we are greeted with this dashboard screen, as you can see. And with the branding, it is pretty much those dark greens, bright greens, and lots of whites as well. And obviously, this signifies money and whatnot. And depending on the person, this may be a good layout. It might not be. Personally, I don't think it is that good. I think it's pretty average compared to kind of other 
brokers that we have, but depending on the right person, you know, it may be good for you or whatever it is. Now, dashboard screen basically tells you a quick snapshot of how your portfolio is doing. As you can see, it's pretty much blurred out, but it tells you how much money you've made in a single day. It also tells you how your portfolio is performing against the market as well, which is pretty interesting. And it's good to see if you want a quick recap on what happened on a specific day. Like you might be working a standard nine to five job and in a single day, you might be making 250 for the day. And let's say that your portfolio is up $300 in that day. It feels pretty damn good, right? Even though daily returns don't really matter that much, especially if you haven't really sold, you don't really get the gain. However, just seeing that gain, right? While you're working very hard at your job, seeing the gain and seeing your money working hard for you <laughs> is just an amazing feeling. And I do like this feature, even though maybe in the long run, it might not mean too much at all because it goes the opposite way as well. In a bad market day, it does feel pretty bad. So it can basically go both ways. Now looking at this left panel, as we can see, you can basically see your overall position with your holdings plus cash. And it basically gives you an overall snapshot of where you stand at the moment. Now, I just want to comment on the graph where you can see your portfolio performance versus the Australian market for the day. I think that this feature is kind of like a gimmick in a way, although it may be nice to actually have a look at for the day. I do think that if you're looking to invest for the long term and long term specifically, seeing your portfolio stack up against the Aussie market is not really a good comparison just for the day. I think that since investing is a long term gain, it really matters what your long term performance is over time. So it is a good feature for some people, but I think mostly it may be a gimmick for those long term investors. So basically what I'm trying to say is that seeing daily benchmark comparisons may not be the best thing if you're trying to invest for the long term because it is not really a good idea to try to beat the market every single day of the year, right? It's just, it's not gonna happen. It is a very unlikely thing that you'll be able to beat the market every single day. I think over the long term, it is worth looking at, but not every single day. Now scrolling down, you can see two boxes, right? Basically, you've got a person that trades with self-wealth. Basically, you can see today's most viewed member and the top stocks today. And I think these two panels are mostly designed to help you or encourage you to trade even more. When you see top performers like this, you can basically click on their portfolio and see what they've bought or see what their profile consists of. And I think that this may make you FOMO and make you trade even more. So if you're a beginner, it may make you want to trade those stocks even more, but it may not be the best thing because if you're finding out what the best stock or the most viewed profile is from this screen, right? Probably thousands of other people have already seen the stock as well and other market participants as well. So it may not be the most accurate place to get your information and it may make you to get results that are not really as good as you may have thought. Now comparing this to Perla, instead of seeing these avatars and seeing a random username, you actually get to see people's real names and real profile pictures to signify that these are, you know, real people and these are real portfolios that they have. So Perla is more about kind of being transparent on that front. But once again, Perla is more about those ETFs and long-term investing. So depending on who you are, you might actually love this feature quite a bit because self wealth is more about those individual stocks and trading and whatnot. So it may suit you on that front. Looking at the portfolio screen, as you guys can see, once again, it is blurred. I apologize. I will do a full portfolio or stock review, ETF review once I reach 10K subscribers on the channel. So if you guys do want to help out with that, do leave a subscribe. But I do like this screen. It is pretty standard, but one feature that I do like is the fact that they show you the weightings, as you guys can see, for all of your stocks, which I think Stake does not have. So that's a pretty good feature. I really like it. It basically shows you, you know, if your stocks are being allocated towards the percentages that you want. So I think that's pretty good. And once you go on to the second tab, which is the performance and stats tab, this is really good because it really shows you the performance of your portfolio compared to the market over not just the day time frame, but it actually shows you for a much longer time frame. You can basically see you've got 12 months, 24 months, and it can even be longer as well, I think. So I think this is pretty good. So as you can see right now, I am underperforming the market, which is pretty embarrassing. I will completely admit that, but I do like to be pretty transparent. And that is mostly due to the ASX Asia ETF and ASX Doe, the company which has been falling recently. So if you do invest in those two companies and ETFs, check these two videos out right here. These two videos will basically explain why that's happening and why I'm still holding on to these companies and ETFs. So check it out. 
I think it'll be pretty helpful. Now, having a look at the buy or sell screen, I'll just put in a random stock that we just spoke about, which is Doe, let's just call it. Once I put it in and search for it, as you can see, you've got this pricing chart over here. Now, of course, the market is closed at the moment, but I think recently they added in free live pricing for every single person, regardless of if you were on the self felt membership or not, which I think is a pretty good addition. Previously, it was restricted to those members only, so I think that's pretty good. And then also you've got the market depth as well, which brokers like Perla are missing at the moment. I think that this is quite a vital piece of information that a lot of other brokers have, so it's pretty good to see. Now, having a look at the trading account tab, this is where things get slightly confusing, right? So you've got a bunch of tabs. You've got cash account, invoices, trades, reports, movements, and contract notes. Now, as an example, let's say that we've got the cash account right here. We've got the trading history. And then if we go on to a similar screen, which is, let's just say, reports, we will get the similar type of information once again. And then we'll also see when it comes to movements, we'll see similar information when it comes to those buys and sells, which I think may be a bit confusing. It is basically the same information, but they've put it in different kind of tabs because they are not exactly the same. They are similar, but not exactly the same, which is why they've split it out. I think if they can consolidate a few of these tabs, it will be pretty good because it does get pretty confusing at times. Now, the last feature we'll have a look at before we have a look at the cons of self-wealth is the target portfolio, as you guys can see. Basically, you can make a target portfolio and invest towards it if you wish similar to how Perla does it, I believe, but I think Perla does it better because it is more towards long-term investing. But if you do more frequent trading, which is what self-wealth is kind of designed to do in a way, you might not really care about target portfolio too much because you're buying and selling things very frequently. So it might not really matter, but I guess it's good that it's there. And then once you've made your target portfolio, basically you've got this portfolio alignment tool, as you guys can see. And essentially I can just go to this tool and it'll basically make these multiple buy and sell orders and it'll basically align my portfolio towards target portfolio, which is pretty interesting. It is pretty similar to what Perla does as well. But to be honest, before I was making this video, I didn't even know that this feature exists. It isn't really marketed too well. So it was interesting to see that self felt has this feature as well. So yeah, if you're interested, this may be something that you may be looking for. All right, now let's have a look at the cons for self felt starting off with the support feature, right? So if you need support with anything, you have to either email them or you have to do a live chat with them, as you guys can see. If you try to call them, well, you won't be able to call them in the first place because as they've said, we focus our energy on email and live chat support. Therefore, do not offer phone support at all, right? So that's a bit of a bummer if you need someone to talk to. If you've got some sort of a complex issue, it is going to be a bit of a hassle. But to be fair, I have not had any of these complex issues at all. And the email support has been pretty quick and they've been pretty okay when it comes to that sort of stuff. So I haven't had too big of an issue when it comes to the actual support. Number two, the design and branding of self health is a bit outdated in my personal opinion. I do like steak a lot better. It's much more modern. It's much more sleek and edgy and kind of premium even with the whole black and white aesthetic. self health just basically gets the job done, I guess. Um, it may not matter too much to you if you're looking for that sort of stuff or not. Thirdly is the US share trading, as you guys can see, it is a bit overly expensive, you know, like nobody needs to pay $10 USD to actually buy an American stock or ETF, plus pay the actual foreign exchange fee. I think it is quite expensive and other offerings out there are much more cheaper. And I think self health needs to kind of get on board with kind of lowering their fees if possible, um, because it is pretty competitive and nobody needs to pay that much to actually buy those American stocks. It is just way too expensive. Even brokers like Perla are charging 650 AUD for the trade, not 950 as self health is doing. So other offerings, other newer offerings are a lot cheaper than self health. And then fourthly, if you like to day trade quite a bit, you may actually prefer Superhero or Stake as well. As I mentioned, Stake is looking to enter into the ASX market next year with offering people, you know, $3 of flat fee brokerage, plus it's chess sponsored as well. But at the moment, the cheaper broker is Superhero at $5 flat fee per trade, but of course they are not chess sponsored. But if you're day trading, you might not even care about chess sponsorship that much anyway. So there are better and cheaper offerings out there, but people still like to use self world because it is a flat fee solution, which is historically been, you know, pretty cheaper than the big four banks. And then one more point that I need to add, which is not really a point is the fact that if you have a look at the share price for self world, they're not really doing too good at the moment. It seems as if the hype has pretty much died down. 
The overall return has been pretty good. It's pretty solid. But the hype when it came to last year around kind of that April, May, June, July, August kind of period, the hype was absolutely insane. And Selfworld posted some pretty record numbers in terms of trades and user base, but it seems that the hype has kind of died down. So if you're a Selfworld investor, you may be pretty disappointed at the moment. So yeah, that just sucks. So overall, if you're looking for a solution that is cheaper than the big four banks and you're basically sick of the big four banks that are basically overcharging you, Selfelt may be a broker for you. However, they will not be the cheapest ones, especially with all these new brokers coming in offering those really low fees. At a time, you know, not now, but you know, a couple of years ago, Selfelt was a really good option. But as times have changed and companies are starting to reduce their brokerage, Selfelt is not being really competitive at the moment. So that is the review. If you're so interested, check out the link in the description for five free trades. Now, if you're a new investor looking at buying shares, but you're not too sure about the terminology when it comes to placing a trade and all that sort of stuff, check out this video right here. This is a beginner self-world trading tutorial. And this video is the in-depth Perla review, which I basically go into all the features of Perla. So check this video out. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Although, although it may be nice to have a look at for